Okay. Thank you first for the invitation. Unfortunately, I missed most of this conference. I only uh, arrived today due to previous uh, engagements in my home uh, faculty. But now I'm here. I will try to present a little bit different topic compared to it's not a biological system. It's it's a soft matter system, and uh, I will also switch to a complicated topological uh, result, but not exactly knotted and linked. So I will compare and contrast what we anticipate and what we have so far seen in an experiment. So, first of all, our system of interest is a system of pneumatic and cholesteric defects in droplets. So, what are defects? Uh, well, defects have, defects are, of course, you, uh, you maybe remember the talk from Slobodan Zumer, uh, who already explained most of this. But we have topological invariants that are conserved when the defect and is transformed under uh, continuous transformations. So here we have a system which not only has a knot in there or a link, but this link has internal structure. So uh, I instead of just having a loop, you have a framed knot. So there is a framing that is supported by this director configuration uh, described by the pneumatic molecules, and this is uh, why we have additional invariants there. Okay, uh, this is a general outline. Of course, we have uh, in the pneumatics we have disclination lines and disclination points, and the lines are those that can make knots, and the points are those that actually turn out to be quite as interesting as well, but are not knotted because they're points, right? But uh, around points, you can also talk about knotting if you observe the topological structure of the director around it. So if you, if you trace the pre-images of certain direction in space, you can also arrive at linked states. Uh, and in our systems, mostly we have these minus one half discrimination lines. This just means that uh, in a cross section, even line goes like this, and you have these uh, molecules all arranged in a certain direction. Molecules are, of course, not polar, so you, this is why you can get this profile that actually turns by, uh, by 180 degrees. And mostly we have this conformation. This conformation is important uh, because it has a structure is cast, is cast uh, threefold symmetry, so this is why you can actually define a uh, third integer invariant when you come around. If you take this profile, this profile rotates when you come around the entire link. And uh, this is what is conserved, right? So when you have transitions between different states, we have to observe that not only will a knot if you rewire it, trans uh, transforming the, another knot, which is at most one rewiring, one crossing away. So you have neighborhood of the, in the space of all knots, but it also has to conserve these invariants. Okay, so what's the self-linking self number? I will just recap this. Uh, every, every defect line has this cross section, right? And if you, when you close the loop, it can close at any uh, multiple of 120 degrees. Uh, this is actually a topological invariant uh, known as a self-linking number, which decomposes into right and twist. And here it becomes interesting, because right is actually a sh shape uh, Shape invariant is just the redundance on the shape of the uh, discrimination line. And the twist is the internal structure. It twist, twist is this uh, twisting when you go along. And this is uh, not allowed by the free energy, not much, right? 
So we can say that in, in pneumatic liquid crystals, uh, where this is discouraged by free energy, the shape of the knot is prescribed. The right has to be a multiple of two thirds. And this is why when you do this on colloidal systems, which I will not talk about today, uh, you can always see the same shapes. All the shapes are similar and they have to go this three dimensional shape has to follow a trajectory that conserves this right into, it quantizes the right. And it quantizes it in a similar way which also the tight knots actually conserve this uh, approximately at least, right? Uh, and what's more is that the self-linking number uh, satisfies this con conservation law. So the self-linking, sum of self-linking numbers of all the knots involved plus twice the linking uh, numbers between the loops. Uh, of course, this normalizes to an integer. Uh, plus the number of components equals the topological charge, which is in this case just a number of these uh, colloidal particles, but it's modulo two. So this is even odd effect. This is related to the uh, uh, up and down symmetry of the uh, of the pneumatic molecules. Okay, where do we see knots? In, in a uniform cell, you actually have loops like this and you have these rewiring sites, right? And these rewiring sites uh, have this tetrahedral symmetry, which of course also geometrically restricts this rotation to two thirds or one third or something like that because uh, uh, it, 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 this component happens also when you go into different systems. So locally all the rewiring will look the same. Even if you have this, you, you have a system which doesn't have these stabilizing uh, spheres, uh, you will also have, just be, before you get the uh, rewiring, you will have this characteristic local shape that always has to be the same. And uh, we did a lot of this in pneumatic cells, so we just uh, put colloidal spheres between two plates and fill it with liquid crystal and you observe what you get. And in this particular system, 90 degree twist, which basically has a, like a wire mesh of disclinations on top and bottom in 90 degrees, and then you have like rewirings from top to bottom. Uh, we, we can actually prove that you can get all links and knots provided that colloidal grid is large enough. Uh, we also played a little bit uh, with three-dimensional systems, but today I will talk about current pneumatic droplets. So this is easy, right? You put a sphere in there, the sphere forces a uh, loop to exist there, and then you rewire the one, one loop with the other loop with laser tweezers or you just uh, cool it down from uh, a high temperature. But here, in pneumatic droplets, you have a much stricter rule, right? You, uh, basically, we only care about uh, droplets which have perpendicular anchoring because this is restrictive enough to actually force a boundary condition because if you, if you make the boundary conditions free, or just uh, to vary in the plane, then it'll, it can just relax. So you have to force it. And then we use chiral pneumatic. This means that the pneumatic wants to introduce a helical structure in it. Why is this interesting? Because helical structure requires a non-vanishing helicity, which is completely incompatible with the surface condition which of course surface connection requires there is no twist there. So this is, this is a deep geometric uh, restriction, right? You have a twisted thing and you explicitly forbid all twist on the surface. So what, what does the li uh, liquid crystal do there? Then uh, we just run a simulation. Uh, this is what you get if you have free boundary conditions. So here you can see that it's, it's not complicated enough. You have a lot of 
optical, inter optical interesting stuff, but not defects because you have a free boundary condition. And if you go for homeotropic, you get something like this. And every time we run a simulation from random initial condition, you get something different because, uh, of course, this is a frustrated state and it just kinetically freezes the disclination lines, uh, which cannot relax because between the disclinations there are these helixes, and it's just a like a spring. So what we get is something like this. Okay. So we get a zoo of knots, right? We we this is a not so recent paper. This is two years old. Uh, this is from simulation, right? And then we have a lot of questions here, right? What are the transitions between these systems? Because of course you can always now we, now you have a uh, field. It's not just a knot. It's a discrimination line which has a field around it. So there are free energy transitions between those. So if you have two states, you can always ask yourself what's the easiest way to transform this into that. And this is actually an, an still an open question because we, we don't have a lot of students to do this work. Uh, but uh, of course, this, this can also lead us to an, another question, right? Uh, are the knots that are similar in terms of uh, closeness in uh, general topological rules without the field? Are they also close here? So you have something that can mathematically be on the paper transitions from here to there with one crossing. Can you do it here? Or is it forbidden for, because of the field around it? We, we maybe have to do some complicated transition which involves like four crossings or something. So uh, we want to do, want to do this uh, uh, in the future. What's, what's also interesting here that we have a parameter. It's the correlative parameter that tells us how much this wants to twist. And we have a uh, known boring ground state for pneumatic. There's just a single point defect in the middle, which can be actually represented by a small loop. It depends on the exact free energy and temperature and everything. And then how do you get from this to this, right? You can. Imagine increasing correlative. You can do this in an experiment. You can put in there an azo dye. It means that you have a molecule that uh, changes conformation uh, under the influence of uh, UV light. And uh, you can do this transformation from a chiral to chiral state continuously. And the question is, how do you get there? And mostly the answer is you don't. These are metastable states. You can always start here and make it less and less chiral, and you always get there. But the energy barriers are such that when you start with this, you always get one of, one of those structures that just have a uh, discrimination loop stuck to the surface. It just expels this loop away, and then it starts winding on the surface. So these are metastable but hidden states. You can get there by quenching, by uh, creating a random initial condition, but not otherwise. So the, uh, the plan is to start with the complicated condition and go down. Because then you can visit all the intermediate states and, and see how they converge. Uh, this is work in progress. Uh, but there's another important issue. This is all simulation. So. Did we observe these states in experiment? And the answer is not yet, uh, at least not conclusively proven. And to check that, we first had to develop a experimental method that can actually observe these states in three dimensions, which is a challenging thing because this is like 20, 30, 40 micron droplet. And you need three dimensions and you need direction, not just density. So. Uh, this is why we, we used confocal microscopy. So uh, for the experiment, uh, 
we made droplets, but uh, we had to use a certain mixture that allows this microscopy to function because you, 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 you want to avoid uh, too much light diffraction because otherwise you don't see anything. And we use this uh, fluorescent cofocal polarized microscopy, which is something that just excites the molecules in that direction. And depending on the direction, you get a different signal of the uh, emitted light. And this is how it looks like, right? You see there's a layered structure and there, this is under different polarizations of the incoming light. So you see it, it clearly works. You can reconstruct the angle from here for each slice. You see if the polarization is like this, its signal is strong and it's weaker if it's blue. So there's a formula that can extract the uh, spherical angles from here. The two-dimensional angle, the flat angle, it's clear, right? But the problem is the formula for the uh, polar angle is different, right? It has a fourth power which kills the angle, right? So we don't know this from this. We only know the absolute value of the projection, so what to do, right? Uh, and, but of course, this is just a sign. And we do have the simulation uh, code that we, we have the free energy which we know describes very well this system, right? So instead of simulating from scratch, we just took this and simulated just the angles. In, we used, uh, 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 we, we used uh, uh, stochastic methods, so we, we just uh, uh, did simulated annealing actually. Because it's sort of like a spin system. You, you have a up and down in each point, and we annealed this uh, numerically to fix it, right? First, we had to, of course, clip the angles because you, you have to know what's horizontal, what's vertical, right? And then, you observe here, of course, it's wrong, right? Here, it's not uh, normal to the surface of the drop. But here, it's correct. Here, it's correct, and here, it's wrong, right? So after this numerical process, we actually get a reasonably correct state, right? And the important is that if you want to observe topology, this is enough, right? We don't care if it's a little bit scattered here, it's if, if it's a bit flat here, right? This is clipped too much, right? These, these are all parallel, other, they, they would actually have to be fanned out a little bit, but, uh, Topologically, it, it doesn't matter, right? We just want to see this structure inside. And once we had this setup, this is also a lot of optical challenges to make this work, uh, you observed something different. It's not exactly loops, right? You observed a point defect, for instance, a point defect with this distorted bubble around it. And this is also a topologically interesting object because we observe that it's a, it's a building block. All the structures that we observed are made of this. Uh, if you take a cross section here, you see that there's a vortex that actually turns here. Here it's like vertical, and then it goes 180 degrees down. So each of these vortices is actually a skirmion in the cross section. But this is, uh, this is, of course, just the pond defect moved to the edge, and there's some escape, some complicated three-dimensional texture, but no defects there. And then you go a little bit further with chirality, you get two point defects, and there's another point defect in the middle. And here we go, uh, we get to the topological restriction in a sphere, because anomatic, as a, here it can be represented as a vector field because uh, you can just add an arrow at each point because there are no loops. There, if there are no disconnection lines, it's okay to do that. And the sum of topological charges, the, the wrapping numbers have to be one because of the Euler characteristic. Uh, so here it's a negative, it's a saddle point. You could say it's a point defect you can actually see in experiment under the microscope. And you have, again, two bubbles, right? And 
Yeah, it gets interesting, right? Because you can go to higher chirality, you get all these like constellations, like chains of defects, uh, which fit nicely together. And it's just alternating one minus one, one minus one, one minus one, up to five bavas, actually nine, nine point defects, which is amazing, right? This is uh, just in a single droplet. And you can also see that there's a symmetry here, right? These are always like an, in an equilateral tri triangle, and this is always a tetrahedron, the, the surface points, the, every other one. So this is actually maybe useful uh, to get droplets which has some, have some valence to build uh, superstructures from them. Uh, or maybe as a uh, optical resonator for liquid crystal uh, lasers. Uh, but of course, right, uh, topologically we care about these defects now, right? And this is, uh, we, we don't, we, we can ask ourselves why points, why not lines, right? And it turns out we do, do see lines, right? So we also see this, right? This is a different set of structures which are loops, right? We have a discrimination loop, which can wrap around some complicated structures, which, is, which are actually just like, like this bubble, but double, right? Double bubble. Uh, uh, and you can also see here that it's the same repeated texture again, but no knots. And there's a reason for that. We wanted to see knots, we didn't see any. The reason is that in simulation, we used uh, uh, smaller effective droplets because of simulation. It's easier for a smaller system. And we used a model for a liquid crystal at a high temperature, just below the transition, so the defects are cheap. And this is the uh, challenge that we have to get over now because uh, it's difficult to perform confocal microscopy at a high temperature because of thermal motion. Uh, so this is why we have this at below, uh, below room temperature or just about room temperature. Uh, and it appears it's not enough, right? It's not enough to observe the simulated structure. We, we know that they should exist in some regime but not in this regime, right? But nevertheless, we get at least some loops. So we, we can anticipate that if you go uh, with parameters further, we can actually get those also through the loop, uh, through, the, through the bulk, because this is what you need for a knot. Because uh, a loop confined to a sphere is never a knot, right? It would have to be at least a torus to get torus knots or some higher genus surface for higher genus knots, right? Of course. Uh, so this is not enough, right? So we need bulk discrimination loops. But we did see something that wasn't seen before, and this is higher order point effects. So topologically, they're of course allowed. But there's a paper that says that, there's an old paper, it says that the harmonic map cannot have a higher than plus or minus one topological charge in there. And pneumatics, pneumatic director uh, is a harmonic function, right? It, it satisfies a nabla squared equals to zero uh, equation. But this is a cholesteric. This doesn't follow the same rules. So here, we can of course have you're, it's not forbidden to have point defects of higher charge. But uh, this is the first time we, we seen, we, we've seen them in experiment. And this is how it looks like. It, it's really convincing. You can observe this point here. And uh, it's a perfect three-fold symmetry, actually, in the confocal image. And if you reconstruct this, you can just see these three bubbles. We are, I'm not using this uh, green uh, shading anymore, but they're here. And it's 
it's a stable point defect, and it's a perfectly symmetric structure. And you can see that it's just uh, this structure with two of those merged together. So it's, the charge is conserved, the wrapping number is conserved, but uh, this is more symmetric. And then you can build molecules for that, right? You can take one of those, take it away, replace it with a chain with the same topological charge. So you can build this stuff together. And it doesn't end there, right? So uh, you can also combine this with that, right? So you could have a loop and a higher order point defect and any of these combinations. So it's not exactly what we wanted to see, but it's a new result. So this is why I wanted to present it here, because it's also, it's, it's still not published, this last result. It's, it's work in progress. We submitted to Nature Communications. I hope this goes through. Uh, and now, of course, this is minus two. Can we go higher? And it turns out we can. Okay, so uh, this is this is a more interesting one because it's three dimensional, right? It's it's a tetrahedral structure, four four point defects on the surface, four bubbles, very clearly seen. This one, and this one, and these two are out of plane, and a minus three Hedgecock in the middle, and. You can also combine this with another different structure, right? You can remove this and put something more complicated there. And this is geometrically interesting because now we know what, are the, build, what the building blocks are. So you have these bubbles and you have to put higher order defects around. And this appears to use all the space now. Can you actually have a, a higher charge than that? Uh, well, yes, if it's in the middle, right? You could, you could fit a, uh, by a pyramid here or something like that. But if you go to higher chirality, right? If you, if you increase the chirality here, nothing can reach the inside anymore because you have this Restriction, you can only go one bubble away because then you have to come back, right? Here, point, and then there's something there, and the next one has to be plus one. Okay, and the next one has to be at the surface. So this is, these are the structures that are only possible for a range of chirality's which allows this distance from the farthest defect to the surface to be in some proportion close to the one helical pitch that this cholesteric requires. Uh, here you can see this one is closer to the surface to make room for this, but you can, cannot go much further than that because then you have this all bulk to fill in, right? And this bulk is, of course, filled in with uh, regular uh, layers because there is nothing else to do there. Uh, so this one requires very precise uh, calibration of the pitch. The pitch to the, uh, the diameter has to be exactly right. And here we also then get, okay, this is a specific regime. So are the disclinations in the uh, knotted structures which is simulated also restricted and it turns out uh, that yes if you have a drop that's too big if the chirality is too high you always get this uh, structure expelled to the surface there's always just a snake on the surface and nothing inside so these are all specifically uh, reserved for this transition regime when the pitch is just comparable to the frustration radius. Uh, if we go back here for comparison, actually, uh, 
here, right? Uh, for higher correlate, you only get this. So this is sort of uh, disappears when you go higher. But how? This is also a question for the landscape uh, simulations because does it just become unstable? Does it just collapse into one of those? Is the transition first order or second order? Uh, and of course here, all the invariants have to apply that I was talking about earlier. So at each of these uh, transitions here, the, if you give a cro crossover, the right has to change by two thirds. There's no other way. And also here, the thing that I mentioned before, this is, this is usually twist equals zero, not anymore. Because now you have a cholesteric which prefers one particular direction of this twist. And from work we did on the 90 degree uh, twisted uh, colloidal, uh, uh, this uh, array lattice of particles, we know that chiral knots prefer uh, chiral curves. The right of a chiral knot wants to be of a particular uh, sign. So we got all the right-handed uh, trefoil knots for positive self ringing number and all the uh, left-handed trefoil knots for negative self ringing number. Uh, we have statistics over here, it's, it's not in this talk, but uh, so now that we broke the symmetry by introducing chirality, we anticipate that a certain chirality of knots will be preferred to their mirror images. Uh, okay, so of course, yes, this is still work to be done. Uh, to go back to the end, so. Uh, now that we have all these building blocks, we can of course try to also get discrimination loops and observe the knots in, uh, in experiment. Because then, if you do that, uh, you can also try to polymerize the core of the defect, and then you can observe the knot, or you can actually use this as a template for a knot. Right? You can polymerize uh, uh, monomers that want to go to the defect core, and you can observe the structure, uh, and after we, we try to get the knots, we will try also that. Okay, for conclusions, uh, I hope I'm not too quick, I left 10 minutes for discussion, but maybe 15. Uh, okay, so we experimentally didn't get the knots yet. We got a different, also interesting system, which has these topological defects of higher order that were never seen before, and we now have a method that can observe the structures in droplets in three dimensions. So. Now we just have to tune the parameters to observe this and then uh, maybe report back and <laughs> present the results then. Uh, but these uh, higher order de defects are also interesting as a template for uh, highly symmetric droplets for uh, composing three-dimensional uh, crystals of these droplets and uh, also as a proof that this theoretical result uh, that holds for pneumatics, of course, doesn't apply here, but now we can also actually see how the higher order defect looks like. Okay, thanks for the attention. And here is just uh, a set of my collaborators, of course my supervisor, Slobodan Zumar, the supervisor of the experimental group, Igor Mushevich, uh, Gregor Posniak, who did all the experimental work, and David Sech, who performed the simulations. Okay, thank you.